Hey there! Today I'm going to show you how to add initial data to your database using Entity Framework Core. Let's get started. First thing first, let me introduce the sample project. This is an SP.NET Web API that helps you manage tasks. The project has a controller called Task Items Controller, which has methods to perform CRUD operations. The model consists of two entities, task item and user. Both entities inherit from the base entity, which define common properties such as ID and created at. The task DB context is the DB context that manages connection to the database. It is registered with the dependency injection container in the program.cs class, which is the entry point of the application. I use a local SQL Server database, that's why the DB context is configured with the SQL Server provider. You can see in the project's packages that I have a package called Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQLServer. So at this stage, I don't have any database created yet. To create the database, all I need is migrations. Before using migrations, make sure to have the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools package installed. So from the menu, I select Tools, Nuget Package Manager, then I click on Package Manager Console. This will open a console window at the bottom of Visual Studio. I tap in Add Migration Initial Create and press Enter to execute the command. You should see a message indicating that the command has run successfully. And you can also see that the migration folder has been created in the project. Now that I have a created migration, I need to apply it to the database. So I type in update database and press enter. This will apply the migration to the database. So now let's check the database. If I refresh it, you should see the task DB database. And let's take a look inside. You can see that the table tasks and users have been created and both tables are empty. So let's add some data. In the first technique, I will define initial data in the data context. So I need to override the onModelCreating method in the task DB context class. Then I create two users. I set the first user's name to John and the second user's name is Jane. So notice that I have to provide the primary key even though it is auto-generated. Next, I create two task items. I set the first task item user ID, which is a foreign key to the first user, and the second task items user ID to the second user. To see data, I use the asData method on the entity of type user, which is exposed by the model builder. So now I'll do the same for the task items. Now I need to create a migration to update the database with this data. So again, in the package manager console, I execute the add migration command with the name seedData. Next, I apply the migration to the database using the update database command. Now, I need to check the database. If I run a SQL query against the task table, you can see that the data has been seed correctly. And let's check the users table. I have some data too. This method of data seeding is ideal for smaller data sets but it may become difficult to manage for larger one. Let's dive in into another technique, but before moving any further, I will delete all the migrations in the project and I will also delete the database. And I'm also going to comment out the code in the DB context as well. So the next technique I'm going to show involves adding data directly into the migration code. First, I'm going to recreate a migration. I name it initial create. If we take a look at the file generated, 
you can see that it contains the instruction for creating the table, users, and tasks. The app method contains the code that will be executed to apply the changes, and the down method is used to undo the changes made by the up method. So this is used when rolling back a migration. I introduce a method called seed at the end of the up method. This method takes the migration builder as input. Inside the seed method, I use the insert data method on the migration build on the migration builder to insert data for the users. For the table parameter, I set it to users. For the columns parameters, I provide the name of the columns in which I will insert data. For the values parameters, I provide the values for each column. I'm going to do the same for the tasks. and I apply the changes to the database by running the update database command. So now let's check the database. You can see that it has been created with both users and tasks, table, and the whole contains some data. This technique is flexible, but can take a lot of time and may lead to errors, especially for big data sets or complicated seeding scenarios. So let's move on, on to the next technique. But before that, I delete the database to start fresh again. The next technique allows you to write custom code that runs when the application starts up. So first, I create a static class called task initializer. It has a static method called seed, which takes a web application as parameter and returns a web application as well. So this is an extension method I will use later. So the seed method creates a scope using the OS service property, then create a new instance of task DB context using the service provider property provided by the scope. Because the task DB context is registered with the dependency injection container, so this is the way to get an instance of it. So next, I call the ensure created method on the DB context to create the database if it doesn't exist yet. And next, I check if there are any tasks in the database. If there aren't, I create some users and tasks and add them to the DB context. I call save changes to propagate the change to the database. To use this method, I go into the program.cs, which is a starting point of the application. So before the app.run statement, I call the seed method on the app object. And that's it. Let's run the project now. If I check the database, you can see that it has been created. And let's check if we have some data. Yes, we have some data. We can even check on the API itself. So if I test out the get method, you can see that it returns a list of tasks. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out future videos. See you soon.